Hi, I'm Joe from JH Leather and welcome to part 3 of our head collar making tutorial. Let's get started. Okay, so in this video we will be making the two jowls and the noseband of our head collar. So what we're going to do is grab our two stop squares and our one and three quarter inch ring and our one inch strips of leather. So we're going to find the best end on our strip. And once we have the best end we're going to square that off. We've now marked the overall length. So the overall length of the nose band is going to be 15 inches, but we're going to add two, two inches to this for the turn, so four inches. So we're going to cut 19 inches overall. So once we have the nose band cut out, what we're going to do is we're going to mark four inches in from either end. And that's going to show us where the end of the turn is going to be. Right, so once we've done that, we've got to decide where we can edge to. So we're just going to turn over the end of one of our turns and you can wet that a bit because we want to make sure that the leather doesn't crack we want to get that nice and tight so we can then put in one of our stop squares and just see how tight we can get this and then on the back side of the turn we can mark where we're going to sort of stop stitching to and that will be where we end our edging to and you're going to want to do the same on the other end as well and you want to just transfer that over to the other side. So once you've done that on both ends, we can then number one edge between these two spots. And then we're going to pop that to one side. We're going to start making the jowls. So these can be made in a similar fashion to the two buckle shapes that we made in episode one. Basically, we're going to fold our bit of leather into three and we're going to make this to five and a quarter inches long. So you can do that roughly up against your ruler and then when you're happy you've sort of almost got it there and you can start putting your fittings in and fine tuning. And so you want to make sure that the ring end is where the overlap is going to point to on our jowl and then once we're happy we've got the overall size that we can roughly mark how long it's going to be. We want to add a little bit of excess because once we've got this sort of ready to roll we can actually cut that off to the proper size then. So once you're happy, we are going to mark on where we can edge to. And basically that's gonna be as tight to the ring as possible. And then we can number one edge this, and we're also gonna make another one because we need two jowls. So once you've got both your jowls marked out, you can then head over to the staining table and start staining. You want to stain them as well as your nose band and we're going to do some polishing and then we are going to use our screw crease and draw two crease lines down either side of our pieces.
Okay, so once you've done doing your staining, we can start to stitch mark. So we're going to start here with our nose band. So we're going to pop a stop square on. And we're going to mark where we can start our stitching to. So we want this as close to the square as possible. So just pinch that nice and tight and mark with your thumb where that's going to be. And then even up on both sides with your set square and do the same on the other end. So once you've done that, you can set your dividers to your stitching width. So mine is generally about one eighth of an inch and you can draw your line between those two dots. We're then going to get our number seven stitch marker and we're going to stitch along these two lines. So once we've done that, we're going to pop our nose band to one side and we're going to continue on with the jowls. So what we want to do is we're going to remeasure that and make sure that they are five and a quarter inches long. And once we're happy where they are, we can mark on for our stitching. So again, we want this as tight as possible to both the ring and the stop square. And so once you've marked down the ring end, what you can do is transfer that mark onto the back of the tab. And then what we can do later on is we can then cut that down to size. So once you do that, you can then even up on the front side of your jowl where you want your stitches to go and then on the tab you can sort of cut that off square and then you can number one edge along there and we're going to want to put a bit of stain on that also. So once we've done that we can then use our dividers and stitch mark between these two marks and we will be doing the same on the other jowl as well. So once we've got both our jowls stitch marked, we can then skive the very end. So we're going to skive sort of the last five eighths to three quarters of an inch down to half thickness and then just trim any fluffy bits. And once we've done that, we can now assemble our two jowls. So we're going to pop the ring on and the stop square. And remembering to make sure that that turn on the edge faces towards the ring. And then using some tacks, we're going to tack this together. So to start with, I tried using 16 mil tacks and these weren't long enough. So you might need a bit longer tacks for this. So I ended up using some 20 mil ones, which worked fine.
Okay, so once we've got our first jowl all tacked on, we can then double hand stitch this. So we're going to start as always with a back stitch and then we can continue stitching the rest of the jowl as normal. So once you finish stitching your first jowl, we can then tack on the second jowl and start stitching that. So you want to make sure that both your stop squares are facing the same way before you do any stitching because that was going to be a bit of a pain if they're not. So once you have stitched the other one on, we can then get back to our nose band. So what we're going to do now is we are going to skive the ends to nothing. Okay, so once you've done your skiving, what we are going to do is get our padding ready. So I'm using 6mm plasters out as the foam for my noseband. And we're going to cut a strip of foam just over one inch wide. So if you want your padding to be a bit more pronounced, you can always cut your padding strip a bit wider. And once you've got your strip cut out, we can then taper the ends and skive the end to nothing. And once we've done that on one end, we want to mark the overall length of our foam. And so this is going to sit just inside the last stitch on either end. And once you know the overall length, you can cut that to size and then again taper at the end and then skive it down to nothing. So we can now get our padding foam. So once again, I'm using 0.8mm Nappa for this. I want to cut a bit just wider than our foam insert. And then once we've got that cut out, we can start to glue our foam on. So we want to glue that in the middle of our padding leather. And 
And then using a pen, we're gonna fold the padding leather around the foam and roughly mark the middle line on it. And then we can trim off any excess. And then once we've trimmed off any excess, we can put some more glue on here and then start folding our leather around the foam insert. And then with a pair of scissors, we're going to cut these ends at an angle. So that's going to sort of skive it or give it a skived sort of tapered end, as it were. So by cutting it on an angle, it just means that once it's stitched on, you're not going to have like a cut edge showing on the foam. Once we've done that on both ends, we are going to tack one end of our noseband onto our stop square. So once you do that, you can then glue your padding foam in place. So we are only going to tack one side in and then we're going to stitch down this side towards the other turn. So we're going to stop short and then stitch back on the other side. And by doing that, we can it makes it a bit easier to stitch because once you've got everything together, there is a lot of uh, leather uh, flapping around in the clams there. So it's easier, I have found, to stitch on half of it and then when you are ready, stitch the very last part in place. So as you can see, I've stitched down the one side and I've stopped nice and short here of the turn on the other end of the noseband. And I'm now gonna stitch up the other side from where I've stopped so it matches. Okie dokie, so now we've done that, we can then start to assemble the noseband. So we're going to pop the other end of our turn in place, and then this can be a bit awkward, so you might need to hold the turn over some things. So I've had to move my cutting block out of the way just so I can get room to actually tack that in, because obviously everything now is circle, so it is a bit awkward. So we're going to pop a couple tacks in there, and then once we've done that, we can glue our padding foam on. So as you can see, that's all tacked in place. So I'm now gonna glue the padding foam on and then I can stitch up that last bit of the head collar.
Okay, so now we've got our noseband stitched on, we can start doing some finishing touches. So hopefully your noseband is looking a little bit like this. So what can happen is the leather can shift a bit. So what we're going to do is by sanding that down, we're just going to make the edges all even. And once we've done that, we can then restain and polish the edges of our leather. And once we've done our restaining and polishing, we can then recrease all around our straps. So as you can see, your head collar is now starting to take shape. So in the next part, we will be making the cheeks and the back stay, and that is going to be the final part of this head collar making tutorial. So thank you very much for watching. If you like the video, please click the thumbs up button and subscribe for more videos and tutorials, and I'll see you in the next episode.